Hi everyone, today we are going to be talking about Verbascum dapsis L, otherwise known as the flannel plant, woolly mullion, great mullion, and common mullion, which is a herbaceous biennial. Before we get too deep into discussion about common mullion, I want to let you know that if you have any questions about this species, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer you. As for now, let's continue on learning about common mullion. When flowering, common mullion can grow to be over 7 feet tall, and it originally gained popularity by being used as a form of natural medicine to treat respiratory ailments, urinary tract infections, and skin diseases. Another use for common mullion that raised its popularity, especially with early European settlers, was fishing. If the seeds of common mullion are crushed up, then thrown into slow-moving water, it will essentially stun any fish that are in that water, making them float to the surface and easy to collect. However, I believe this form of fishing is illegal in many states now, so don't go around doing it. Common mullion is known to be invasive or naturalized in a lot of ecosystems. In a lot of places, it'll form ephemeral populations, only sticking around for a little bit. And this species is native to parts of Eurasia and Africa, but has since been introduced to North America, where its distribution ranges through all 50 states of the United States of America and parts of Canada. Common mullion prefers disturbed open areas and roadsides, and during their first year of life, common mullion occurs as a basal rosette, which resembles a head of lettuce. Then it grows a terminal inflorescence in its second year, which has an alternate leafing pattern. The leaves themselves are simple, very pubescent, and sessile, which means that they lack a petiole and the leaf blade is attached directly to the stem. As we know, common mullion flowers during its second year of life, producing a terminal inflorescence that contains many yellow flowers. Blooming typically occurs May to September, and the flowers themselves each have five petals, five stamens, and one pistil. The major pollinator for common mullion is bees. However, the flowers are only open for one day, and if they aren't pollinated during that time frame, they will self-pollinate. After flowering, the common mullion plant dies and produces a bunch of tiny brown fruits known as capsules. The capsules contain hundreds of tiny seeds that aren't adapted to go very far from the parent plant. Most of the time, the seeds fall within three feet of their parental plant. Unless, of course, some other external factor like wind, water, or a nearby animal has something to say about that. Each common mullion plant can produce a tremendous amount of seed. On average, one plant can crank out 100,000 to 200,000 seeds. An interesting thing about common mullion seeds is that they can persist a long time in a seed bank. By a long time, I mean that the seeds have been known to stay dormant and still germinate after a hundred years of being buried in soil. This can be threatening to native species because the seeds of common mullion just sit and wait. Then once a disturbance like a tree falling or a flood occurs, the seeds laying in the seed bank germinate. Alrighty, that is all for this video. I hope that you all enjoyed learning about Verbascum thapsis, otherwise known as common mullion with me. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in my next video.